How Iran Fuels Online Trolls to Spread Anti-Hindu Disinformation. The Iranian anti-Hindu disinformation campaign exposed. Okay. A recent study published by the Network Contagion Research Institute, or NCRI, showed that anti-Hindu content is becoming increasingly visible across social media platforms such as Reddit, Twitter, Telegram, and Gab. The study demonstrated that anti-Hindu slurs and content spiked after Parang uh, Agrawal, an Indian American software engineer, was appointed as CEO of Twitter in November of 2021. The study finds that most anti-Hindu content is generated by troll farms based in Iran, masquerading as human rights activists, journalists, and humanists. It is evident that the misinformation spread by these accounts exacerbates the religious tensions between India and Pakistan. The study also highlighted that these trolls pose as individuals from Pakistan, blaming quote-unquote Hindu extremists for a bombing carried out by ISIS in 2017 on a passenger train. John Farmer, one of the study's authors, stated, quote, violence commonly follows hate memes, hashtags, and such. Therefore, the real danger in these hateful online content, in this hateful online content, is their tendency to translate into real life violence. You know what? Let's just say, let's just say ISIS from now on, because I don't think like people might like, get confused. Um, okay, why are they doing this? This is a very interesting question. Basically, one of the one of one of the because there's a couple different kind of operations they got going on, but one of the Iranian regime's operations is to exacerbate relationship between Pakistan and India, that. and they do this in a couple of ways. But basically, by trying to add as much misinformation and vitriol to hindu muslim relationships in india i understood that part my again why but why but why 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 would they want india and pakistan like what how does that serve the so, that they, so that they could become a more strategically important partner in brokering that relationship um you would think instead okay the, but but instability in the region is not good for Iran. Do you know what I mean? Yes and no. They I mean, want it to be okay. they want it to be heated enough so that they could make themselves useful. Okay. If it was already unstable, then the them being useful would be like a point of advantage to them, right? Uh, but it's kind of like punching yourself in the face to be able to be like, hey, I have like the solution for that. Like, I don't understand, like, because the region's instability will backfire on Iran itself. Also, how are they going to be the ones who are brokering the deal when people are like, well, you started this, <laughs> like you were involved. Well, in I all. mean, theoretically, they wouldn't have reached the threshold of them actually catching attention of this being a state sponsored exacerbation, right? Okay. But I that's kind of like a known at this point. I think this would make more sense if we don't look at Iran as uh, this one unanimous, you know, unanimous Iran's politic as this as one group of people that have that are speaking in one direction. You know what I mean? Like, you know, this might be a certain. So maybe, maybe this is not official government policy. Maybe these are some certain certain groups either associated with the government or not within Iran with their own specific interests that might be not of the same as the entirety of the government. Okay. Okay. I mean, that's possible. I, I read the whole report today and it specifically refers to them as state sponsored Iranian troll farms. So yeah, but that doesn't mean that doesn't mean like regime sympathizing. They used the language state sponsor, which yeah, entails, state, in my interpretation, a lot more involvement, right? Yeah, but the state in Iran 
is against the state in Iran in many different Oh, ways. I see what you mean now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Which state? The deep state? The, <laughs> no, the Iranian the Iranian state cannot like is not even uh, in agreement with itself in some of the most fundamental important things. Mm -hmm. Like when it comes to the identity of the state, when it comes to the future of Iran, when it comes to like the JCPOA, like which we like which is like could could end the regime itself. There are people within the regime that want to go running towards the United States and the ones who want to annihilate the United States, right? At the same time, within the state of Iran. So if, if, they don't, if they're not in agreement on such fundamental issues, I, can't, I wouldn't believe like, oh, yeah, like this is because this is state sponsored. It means that the entirety of the Iranian government will endorse it. Like this might be a certain fraction of the state that will like, okay, let's take advantage of this in, in situation. Yeah, maybe like, maybe they, maybe they notice how sensitive some of uh, some Hindus are and they want to encourage the Hindus to take action. Okay, this is what my guess, okay? Maybe they think if Hindus uh, um, take action, violent action against some Muslims, the Muslims will respond tenfold and that will, because one thing that Iran takes advantage of is sp sponsoring proxy groups, Islamic proxy groups in the region. You know what I mean? So if there's tension, Iran has managed to, a lot of Iranian, um, ag, uh, you know, uh, institutions, Islamic institutions have been able to take advantage of that instability. Like, look, they, that, the instability in Lebanon managed, uh, was it made Iran able to take over Lebanon, right? The instability in Iraq has managed to t help Iran um, have a lot of control in Iraq politics. They come like, hey, we're, we're here to help you, right? So maybe instability in Pakistan will help them increase, like, because they, like, like what they used to do in Afghanistan. Like, for example, Iran has lost its reach um, in Afghanistan, right? Because the, ever since the Taliban taken over, um, they are not, it's not as, a free for all in Afghanistan it was used to be for Iran to come and use it, you know. Okay, there was something very yeah. interesting about this report, though. So yeah. there was kind of two aspects to it. One half of the report was talking about the Iranian troll farms, and then the other half of the report, and the, and the Iranian troll farms are mainly working in India or or making it look like they're working in India or making it look like they're working in Pakistan to then foment discord. The other half of it was talking about anti-Hindu content that was circulated more on 4chan uh, and Gab uh, by more, can I say white supremacists? Can I say that? Or Just say it, yeah. Okay, yeah, so yeah. it was circulated by white supremacists in these platforms more in North America and the quote unquote West. Right. So there were kind of two different perspectives that they were looking at. And one thing that I thought was very interesting about the. What there were many instances in this report where the example that they gave of a example of a bigoted mean against Hinduism was actually a meme mm -hmm. criticizing Hindu traditions or criticizing Hindutva. And they included these in the appendices of this report saying that this is an example of anti-Hindu bigotry. Oh when God. it's very clearly, at least to someone who's familiar with these things like I am, where I was like, that sign, there was one that showed an example of people giving a protest that looked like in India. And they were holding a sign that said F Hindutva. And it was on a red poster and then in the center was a white circle with the om symbol in black made to look like the yahtzee swastika so it was the the om you know transformed into the swastika clearly a, sim, a, a commentary on hindu fascism right the sign literally said f hindutva and this was included in the appendices as an example of anti-hindu bigotry there was another instance where they included two memes where it was making fun of the widow burning tradition criticizing the, oh hidden, the, the sati tradition it like That's it a... it showed one person it was like a doge sitting on a couch and he had you know the exaggerated big brain and he had the hanuman 
be like Hindutva symbol in the background as a poster on his wall. And he was saying like, oh my gosh, our glorious ancestors, things were so much better back then. And then it, the, the next panel goes back then and was the doge being burned on a pyre, like the Sati tradition, <laughs> right? So that to me, that is not bigoted towards Hindus. That is criticizing a very real violent tradition that happened but this report framed you this, bigot you're just the, one the of report those bigots. framed this as an example of showing who made this Hindus report? as evil and exorcistic like that it that really report? confused me who made the, so who, like who made is this criticizing report? the harmful practices within no. this religious tradition now bigotry that's ridiculous to me i mean and then let me be clear a lot of the other memes that they um, showed from like Grapers, from 4chan, were despicable. Like, I want to be very clear. It, it, not every example was like this. A lot of it, and I was, um, I was shocked at the nature of the language and the imagery, right? It actually did teach me about a lot of anti-Hindu tropes that I wasn't aware of. Um, so I did find it very educational and like something to keep in mind in that regard. But there were that's my one of my major criticisms of this report where i was like this is clearly about the yeah political politicization of hinduism that this meme is referencing and making fun of like it seems so disingenuous and actually a disservice a major disservice to include these as examples in contrast to the Islamist memes that were included in this report, which were despicable, right? And interestingly enough, it never once referenced the anti-Hindu bigotry in Bangladesh. You know, it just talked about some instances that happened in the 90s in Jersey, Jersey City in the US, which were despicable, let me be clear, they were really bad. But you know, that's like almost 30 years ago. Meanwhile, if you just like look into the rest of South Asia, you don't have to look far to find, I mean, Pakistan and Bangladesh, like the anti-Hindu bigotry is vitriolic. But that wasn't even referenced in the report. I mean, besides kind of the interplay between Pakistan and India, but in terms of how the treatment of Hindus as a minority, like in Sindh province, and the campaigns, the, the false flag campaigns that are whipped up in Bangladesh, you know, during Durga Puja to incite why against entire communities, like it wasn't what? referenced once. I was shocked. Why would they talk? Why would they talk about that in this research? This is about Iran. Like, are they? No, no. So the report was supposed to be about kind of anti-Hindu bigotry in broad, but it had a major focus of it that was focused on how there is evidence that major portions of this are state sponsored by the Iranian regime. But it also goes. There's also activities that happened way outside of that, right? And I just thought that it was really not notable that to me, some of the most notable instances of anti-Hindu bigotry were not even referenced in this report. It was like, what happens in the US and then Iran messing around. But I'm like, there's massive campaigns against the Hindus community in, yeah, the rest of South Asia, you know? What do you think about that? I, I, I'm confused because if this is like this is a study by done by a university right and if they yes, are it was a, it was a report wait. that they put out but it should be noted that this wasn't peer reviewed this wasn't published in an academic journal all right let me finish my point okay sorry the point is that these are supposed to be experts academics right and are looking into something that is potential probably something that they are experienced in right like this is their field or else they wouldn't be doing a study on it like this, right? And they, you would, ex so our expectations for people who are producing a study like this is higher than your average person, right? Um, like, for example, a Twitter employee that is trying to enforce community standards, right? Mm -hmm. They're not academics. These people are academics, right? And my concern is that if they can't tell the difference between bigotry and you calling out, I don't know, a fascist ideology within that is like growing in India, right? Masquerading or, as Hinduism, yeah. Yeah, I mean, not not to not to not to act like Hinduism is, itself is okay, you know. I've True. Actually, that's, yeah, or like criticizing an ideology, or like pointing out um, 
cult practices like wife, you know, widow burning, like widow burning, like you criticizing that, you know, like this is barbaric. You say that is bigotry. So if that if they can't tell the difference, I mean, I understand that the people who behind these memes, even if, even though if this is not bigotry, their motivations are, you know, bad. Even mm -hmm. even even the memes that are legitimate criticism, their motivation is not to legitimately criticize. Hinduism, like why would the why would Iran have that? Uh, you know, um, but but if they can't tell the difference, then we are so screwed. Like how how are we going to explain this to I don't know Twitter employees that like hey these are not the same. <laughs> Please thing. give us our account back. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> like okay, oh, shoot, I, get I didn't it. think about it like that. You're right, Arvin. <laughs> yeah, I'm I mean. If they don't get it, like I guess, like we have no, we have no chance in explain. This is kind of like we're we're at like level zero when it comes to Hinduism, you know, because we have went through this with Islam, right? We have like this is like way past nine eleven. Like people are like, okay, guys, there's a difference between criticizing Islam and being an anti-Muslim bigot, and we're like, oh my god, we had to go through so much for some people to eventually get that, right? Um, but now with Hinduism, even the most educated people on the matter seem to be like confused about it. So we're 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 so screwed, Susie. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, this was do, published. Right? This was done by Rutgers University. Like that's yeah. an authoritative university. Um, okay. But like I All said, right. this didn't go through a peer review process or anything. This wasn't published by an academic journal, so it's it's a, a lower burden. I didn't of say that proof. No, but still, still, right. it's done by no, no. That's not my point. I didn't say it's, it meets the highest standards of, you know, research. Fair that's enough. not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that this was done by academics by people that are supposed to be in this field. Okay, that's you know that is already way higher of a standard compared to a Twitter employee that is trying to check whether this meets community guidelines. Like I'm not, you know, it's already like a, a hundred times higher level. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this is what we, and this is what we get. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know. At the same time, I don't want to devalue the nature of this report because the rest of it I did find to be actually very informative and I wasn't devaluing useful. it. I'm just I'm specifically no. on this. I'm just saying they can't seem to tell the difference. I'm not talking about the value. Yes, that that was my my one my one criticism. I think yeah. part of this report was done I, I think it was kind of spearheaded by someone as, as part of their senior project. So, and they were like high schoolers who were involved in helping make sense of all the data and stuff as part of some research program and things. So, it wasn't yeah, the highest standard of even academic rigor itself. Um but I, I did actually find um, their analysis of the anti-Hindu tropes itself to be really informative. Um, yeah. Mm. And, and like now I can identify them easier, which I actually appreciate. We should do it. We should go through that because we want to. Okay. So here's the thing. Just like with Islam, we want to criticize Islam, but also defend Muslims against bigotry. Okay. I think we have to do like we haven't done a good job in doing that on the you know hinduism side right mm. so because we like this is something that we uh, started only for the past couple of years right ever since the kelly issue right so um i think we have had a couple of show showing anti-hindu bigotry you know especially in bangladesh for example but i think we haven't done we could do more and i think maybe this is a good study to try to learn what those tropes are right so i want to attack hinduism and hindu to ideology but also do more to highlight anti-hindu bigotry mm -hmm. you know what i mean mm -hmm. to to because Most of also, the tropes revolve around a stereotype that hindus don't know how to use a toilet that's like the the the, the origin of all the tropes basically is mm. street pooping like stereotypes okay. well let's 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 try maybe we could like figure out what these are so that we could like maybe we could introduce them in the show and yeah like raise some awareness i think that'd be good yeah 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 but i think you're right in terms of where this is an issue that's very much at square zero square mm. one of having these conversations because this report repeatedly uses like phrases like Hindu phobia 
you know, same thing with Islamophobia. We don't like that characterization. Um, and clearly some lack of distinguishing between criticisms of destructive traditions and destructive political movements, unable to distinguish between that and the actual treatment and demonization of people. That's a big problem. And yeah, so I think you're right. I think we need to do a lot more to pull apart these issues, specifically looking at Hinduism. Um, Let's look at okay, some live so, comments. Yeah, yeah, I, I started a whole bunch of good questions. Forever yeah, Stormy is saying, it's <laughs> so she's basically saying that this actually might be proof that the Iranian regime is involved because it's doubtful that the Iranian regime thinks things through. Their policy all over the Middle East is a mess so maybe they are behind it <laughs> actually i don't know about that like the, the iranian regime has is is like really stupid and you know seem to be in some aspect but they also have been very strategic in other places i don't i do think when it comes to their involvement outside of their borders and taking advantage of this stability um they have done some very very clever things like this is why they managed to for a while at least i mean even now to some extent make iraq uh, a, take like Ira iraqi politics is now are in complete not in complete in a lot in, in control of the mullahs in tehran because of their taking advantage of the disability in iraq and also lebanon and also syria right and 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 yemen right so and yeah so i don't know i don't don't dismiss them that easily but yeah but that is funny <laughs> wait this comment by forever storm is making me laugh atheist republic should refer to time as before kali and after kali <laughs> yes before k b k a k yeah let's do b k a k yeah, you're right b k and a k before uh, year, kali year and... 10 year year 10 b k <laughs> that's good so funny doorknob head is saying i did not hear expect to hear the words street pooping today when i woke up <laughs> silly me <laughs> <laughs> um yeah no yeah. in the report like there's a lot more graphic language but i like don't even i don't feel comfortable repeating it and also it's not good for youtube so something i don't remember is saying this is too far-fetched a conspiracy theory how is it a conspiracy theory no, I think he's referring to my comment um, about Iran's intentions with this, that, with like these memes and stuff, right? That yeah. they want to check. Maybe I think that's what he's referring to, right? Hmm. Um, because, uh, because, but I don't think it's a conspiracy theory. Uh, maybe, maybe it is, but uh, yeah, I mean, it is a conspiracy theory, but I don't think it's a bad one. False. Uh, yeah, False yeah. I, I mean, theory. It There's might some be false. conspiracy theories that are true, like MK Ultra. Yeah, yeah, no. Well, this one, this one is like literally what Iran has been doing for the past forty-four <laughs> years. So having a destructive I, influence on everything it touches, the Iranian regime, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, like this is like one of their model. Like this is exactly within their playbook, right? Like go in and try to insert them, like use it, this use any form of disability, uh, uh, and this. <laughs> uh what is it uh, this uh unstable situation to take advantage to insert themselves and portray themselves as a solution and then once and maintain control uh, thereafter it's gone by the way if uh, i'm not saying that, um to, to different levels like i'm not suggesting that they're going to take over india or like control india like they're going to have they're just going to have influence there right like they have gone as far as um nigeria guys like they're doing this in africa right like in nigeria they have they're doing this in latin america okay they, they have in latin america they have shia mosques and people are becoming shia in africa and latin america and people and they're using that as a way uh, they're using the soft power as a way to have some influence in different regions they, they they're doing this in argentina like i don't understand like they have politicians in their pockets in Argentina. Um, some politicians, at first, they, they, they're doing this even in um, Azerbaijan, right? Like, politicians are concerned because at first they show concern and they're like, okay, this, they, this is a concerning. But once they have too much influence, they realize, like, okay, now I actually have to appease them because they, are, they, are, they, have, too, they have too much influence here because they can cause instability. And also they have a group of people that can vote 
So I have to appease them to be able to, and that's how they use their soft power to be able to mean to have some control in different regions. So given that I don't, so given, by the way, something I don't remember is confirming that he was referring to what I said, my theory is a conspiracy theory, right? So given that you're saying, uh, given that Iran is doing this in, in many countries in Africa, in many countries in Latin America, and they, like in many, all over the Middle East, um, I don't understand why do you think this is a too much of a far, again, I'm not saying this is correct, but I don't think this is the far-fetched. And also this, ref and, and this report is confirming that this is what they're doing, but if if you don't think what I'm suggesting is the reason uh, why they're doing it, then why would they be doing it? Like I can't think of any other um, explanation. Again, I'm not saying I'm just guessing. By the way, I'm not saying this is necessarily mm -hmm. true. Um, oh, yeah, um, he's confirming. Hold on, he's confirming. Saying no, I just think they want India to raise the oil prices for uh, from Iran. I don't understand. I don't understand what that means. Okay, all right. Um, Next. Um, well, we have some more live chat comments, but I think they're a bit too much to get into. I think we should move to no, the next I, story. I do want to, uh, Oxymoron has some good points. I just want to make sure that we do highlight member, mem who pe people are members. I do, I do think we should highlight some of their comments. Um, Oxymoron, Oxymoron is saying, at Atheist Republic, many want Rutgers universities and other universities sanctioned by the government of India. Maybe it's an attempt to say we are anti-Hindu bigots. Who's we in this sentence? We want it's sanctioned by the government. Maybe it's in time to say we are in. Okay. Here's another comment. Oxymoron itself, himself thinks that uh, I don't mind that anti-Hindu bigotry. I don't why <laughs> to be fair, I don't mind that anti-Hindu bigotry. Oxymoron, you never cease to confuse me. <laughs> you know, I... You could say a lot, but you could never... I, I could never say I can't anticipate his next move. <laughs> <laughs> He's always trying to make you guess. Like, like <laughs> never let never let them know your next move. Uh, like a Hindu who's like, actually, I don't care about anti-Hindu bigotry. It's fine. I'm like, huh? Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, and secular rarity is saying, oh man, I've been watching this whole time and totally forgot to hit the like button. Everyone else should check if they did too. Yes, thank you, secular rarity. Please remember to hit that like button. It helps out the channel and it's completely free. And it's one of the best ways to support us um, in this cursed algorithm we find ourselves in. <laughs> we have fallen out of favor of the YouTube gods. Yes. We All beg right, for we... their mercy every day. <laughs> Atheist Republic needs your help. We have been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder, Armin Abhabi, blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.